Hey there, it's Patty, and today we are going to go through how to set up basically Zapier with Lead Connector for high level. I am a real estate broker, and I'm going to go ahead and use listing to leads as an example. Um, but for the most part, I think this is going to be the same for just about any um, integration you want to do. So hopefully this will help you to some extent. Um, and so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at one of the landing pages inside of Listing to Leads. And this, I'm actually on a client's of mine, a client's account of mine. So I, she's got a lot of landing pages. So we're going to focus on this one. And what I want to do first is um, just show you that this is obviously Listing to Leads. That's the landing page she created. And what we want to do is get the lead from here into the CRM. So uh, we're going to do it using Zapier. So if I go into her account, she's got the different landing pages here. So I wanted to be sure this one's called the Lake Washington View Home. So I got to remember this because when I go to put a tag on it, that I just need to be sure that it's getting into the right workflow. So we're going to take you from getting the lead into the system and making sure a automated workflow is running inside of the CRM. So first step is we do the integration inside of Zapier. So you have to have your Zapier account and get that set up. And uh, it's my understanding, I don't think you're going to need a paid version. Uh, it's really going to be dependent on how many leads you have because you're only going to have a certain amount of leads that you're going to be able to do for free. But if you're getting a lot, then you probably want to get an, a paid version. So I, I always like to start at um, create a new Zap. And I don't like using this AI thing. It never seems to pick up what I'm looking for anyway. So I just start here. I'm going to click on the very first one. And I'm going to be looking for listing to leads. And you can just start typing in. It will pull it in. Okay. Now, what we're doing now is making sure that we choose an event. And there's only one event. Now, if you're going to use this um, training to pull in another type of uh software just know that at this point you might see a list of different events so in most cases you're going to be wanting to pull in a brand new lead so that's what you're going to do so look for that and then hit continue now in our case we have to actually connect her listing the leads account with her zapier account make sure that it's set up so i'm going to click on choose we already did this once but i'm going to show you how to do this if i go to connect a new account i'm going to see this little window pop up it'll pop up and it's going to say grab your zap uh your zapier key okay so we need to get the key so i'm going to go back over to her listing the leads account and we're going to head down to her profile and get in there and then go to crm integration and then scroll down here to zapier and when you do that, you're going to see a key is going to show up, your Zapier key. You can regenerate or whatever, start a new one if you want. I'm just going to copy this and then go back into our Zapier account. And then I'm going to make sure that I've got the account connected. So you'll go here and you'll put the key in here. As soon as it pops up, you'll just paste the key in and then... Um, just yes, continue. All right. Now, once you do that, it will be set up over here and now you'll have a choice or you'll have it here and it should just be set up. Okay. Next, we're going to go to continue and we're going to test the trigger. So what it's going to do is pull some data from previous landing pages that have been sent in. Um, previous to me coming on, I did run a, a, a lead through that landing page. So it did come in here. However, if you're running tests for yourself and you want to come back in and see new ones, you might want to find new records to see if anything new has come in subsequently. And I'm going to just do that just in case somebody else has hit her one of her pages. I'm just curious. So nothing else is showing up. So I'm going to use this lead here, continued with this, that's me, uh, continued with the selected record. All right, now what are we doing? We're hooking it up to go into the CRM. Well, we're going to look for Lead Connector. That is the name of the service that connects with the CRM. So we're going to click on Lead Connector, and then we're going to choose an event. Now, we have a lot of events inside of our CRM that we can do, but we're just going to add a new contact. Um, you could add it to a, a workflow or a campaign or whatever. I just like to get it in to get started. So I'm going to click on 
add, update, contact, and then I'm going to go to continue. And now you have to do the same thing here. You have to get the CRM communicating with the Zapier account. So we got to go to change and here we're going to pick out her lead connector account. So what we have to do is go back into her CRM now. We're in the CRM and we're going to go over to settings down at the bottom. You're going to go to the business profile and every time I'm on video things are a little slow and then come down here and copy her API key, the API key or your API key. How about that? Then we're going to come back and we're going to connect a new account. Now I already did this too, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, just do it again. And uh, you can rename these two. So if you put it in here, uh, yes, continue to lead connector. And now you've got to connect it. All right. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and do it again. And then I want to rename this so I know exactly what this is. And I'm just going to edit the connection name so I know what it is. Uh, we, I'm going to do, e, for, for us, it's our name of our company is EM Pro, which I can call Lead Connector, uh, and then hit OK. That way, if she comes in later, she's going to know this, this should be it. So I need to change it to the EM Pro one, which I already did, Connect. Okay, so it's done. Um, all right, uh, it didn't change the name here for some reason. It probably will later. I'll worry about that later. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to hit Continue. And now what I'm doing, I actually I need to go back to this because I need to run a test through this. So I'm going to go back a step and I don't know why it just didn't run it, but let's go. It should run the test. I might have skipped over it. Continue selected record, continue. And it should be pulling that record in. So and it should be pulling into this one. So now we're there. Hit continue. And all right. So now what you're going to do is you're going to match up the field so that when the information is coming in off the landing page, it will load into the CRM. So uh, I'm going to match up the different fields. Uh, and it, this is really going to be dependent on what your form is asking. So if I go back over to her form, which is right here, and I go to learn more now, this particular form is asking for name, email, address, and phone number. But I want you to set this up for any possible form that you might have. So if you're ever asking for any kind of addresses um, or anything, I mean, I, you have to know what all of your forms are asking. So you got to make sure that you're still pulling in information into those fields in the event one of your other landing pages has something that this one doesn't have. Does that make sense? So um, offhand, to be honest with you, I haven't looked through every one of her landing pages, so I am going to be um, probably a little oops, probably a little challenged making sure I do this correctly, but we can always come in and edit this later. So I know this first one is the first name, so I'm going to go here. I want the first name to go there. Last name. I want the last name to pull in, right? I don't normally use the full name unless I have to because it might come in kind of weird, uh, this is the last name I just used when I filled out the form. <laughs> uh, but so full name, I'm just going to leave that blank because I don't need that because I've already got the first and last name in. Phone number. In the event the phone number comes in, I'm going to see in this case it was not added, but I still want to make sure it's here. Email. I need the email. Let's get the email off the person. Uh, address. I am going to add the address. Now, if you don't want to go scrolling through all these, you can click in here and start typing. And... Um, it depends on like what, where's the address coming in from. If you actually asked for it, then uh, you might want to just use this one is what I'm guessing. If you asked them in the form. So, and then city, let's see what options, let's see what options we have for city. I'll type it down here. Lead city, listing city, extra city. So I'm going to say lead city. I'm going to assume that's the city where the lead's coming in from. And the state, if you're asking for that, I wouldn't think you'd ask for the state because you probably know where you're working, but just play it safe. You could put the state in here. In case you want to send them direct mail, it will be loaded in automatically. On the other hand, if you know you were working in a particular state, and honestly, I can't remember. I think she's in Idaho. Oh, no, she's in Washington. I could put Washington here, or WA, because I know that's all she works, so I could do that. So you could type that in. And then uh, the zip code. Oops, I keep putting that in the wrong box. We need to put it down here. Lead zip, okay. Okay, let's do that. I don't need to type in zip here. Get that out of there. Okay. 
Um, tags. All right. Tags is going to be anything that you want to track. And tags we could use for various diff we could use it to trigger the workflow if we want to. Um, or we can do like various different things. I'm actually right now going to skip down to source first and see what she's got in here because I want to make sure that I'm clear on which, uh, where this came in from. And this is Lake Washington View Home. That's the source. So that's what I'm going to put in here because this is what I'm going to use to trigger the workflows on the other side of this. Um, choose a, a lead type. Make sure that you just put true on this. You have to put something in if, if it doesn't work, it, you know, then it won't, this, this app won't, won't work. All right, notes. Is there anything else that you want to pull in from the information you're getting? So if one of the forms you say, is there a time frame for purchasing? You could have time frame to buy. Um, this is a buyer landing page. I know that. So I could put time frame, time to, time frame to buy. But since this is a note, I want to make sure I understand what this is when it comes in. So I'm going to put time frame to buy. Now, this is in the notes. But I will, I will tell you that I do have a time frame um, as a field, I believe. Estimated time for purchase or something. Let me see what I put. These, these were... Um, custom fields that I added inside the CRM. So if you scroll down, you'll see past here that I have a bunch of custom fields. And I actually do not remember what I called this one, but I do have like a time frame or something related. Let's scroll down what I have. It's been a minute since I've, you know, and I have a lot of custom fields. Now these are pre-built in the CRM. So every custom field that you have in the CRM will pop in over here. So you can actually load this info into the custom field. What I like about doing this is you can um, easily spot this stuff. Uh, you could also add it to a work, to an email or a text template if you wanted to say, hey, you know, I just see that you're interested in buying within one to three months or whatever you put on uh, whatever somebody put, um, then you can add it to an email. So if it's a custom field, it's way easier to do that. I, I swear I had one in here, but I can't find it. Um, credit scores down here and just, oh, here it is, uh, estimated sale or purchase date. So that could be, um, a, a time, there was a time frame to buy or sell. So this was a buy lead. So we could do that. Or I could even put that one in. I could put them both in for that matter. Um, all right. So these are all custom fields. So if you think you want to track things in custom fields, you can, you could also double up and put it in the notes like I just did up here. So the key is really going to be what's all included in that form that you want to pull in. And if, if that is the case, then um, you just want to make sure that you've got it loaded up in here if you want to track it. So I'm going to do one more time and see what else is in here. If there's anything else that I think she might want that might be coming in with the um, form. Time frame to buy, lead city, I already added that. Um, looking to buy or sell, so that's probably not one. Bedroom, bath, are you looking to buy a home? Are you working with a lender? So I could put in here, in case that, that gets asked, working with a lender. Whoops. So I usually will put it in the notes here. Let's see. Oops, I just lost the time to buy frame. Let me see. Working with a lender. I just deleted it. Let's start working with a lender. And then I can go there again and search here for lender and just put here. So it's either going to say yes or no, probably. So you get, this is just going to pull in. So you can type in anything you want here. Okay. Anyway, get everything loaded in that you want to pass through. Let's hit continue. And then I want to test it. I want to make sure that it's working. So click on test and you should see a success happen. And then I want to publish this. And when I publish it, I want to rename this thing so I know what it is. So, um, and I just want to shut that off. And here, I'm going to rename this. They moved this. It used to be over here. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say listing L2L to lead connector to EM Pro. I just put all three in here so that we know what this thing is called. All right. And then that one's published. Now we want to find out if it's working. That's it. That's all we have to do. So let's go see if it's working, which means we have to go into our CRM and go back out and go out to the contacts and see if the lead showed up. And hopefully it did. 
and there it is right there okay now you know I didn't put the phone number in and it didn't pull in because I never put it in the landing page if it did it should have came through because I did fill it out so that it would pass through all right now this is the first step the next step is is we want to make sure that we have a workflow so that every time a new lead comes in from that landing page that it comes in and goes to that landing page and get starts getting I'm sorry starts getting a workflow or a drip campaign follow-up based on what that workflow is now I did talk to her yesterday and she said that she had not finished her um, her workflow for it yet but I'm gonna just go ahead and pretend for right now just so you can see how this works so if I go over to the automations and uh, what I suggest to everyone who comes into my system is to use one of my campaigns and to clone it so if I go in here right now I don't know if she's got one set up for Washington Lake I'm gonna run a search just to check so I don't see anything in here for Washington Lake let me go back let me just run another quick search she might have done this already and I don't see it so I'm gonna go um, what I would recommend that she do and you too if you've got drip campaigns in your um, CRM uh, then great if you are looking for work or drip campaigns I offer them for uh, for this software so if you want I can push them into your accounts if you're not in my system um, but for real estate for sure we got plenty of that but we can write anything you need hey friends I'm gonna jump in here before I finish this tutorial and give our sponsor a quick shout out because I think it may be the perfect time for you to start rethinking how you are currently working your real estate business I'm Patty Sampson top producer digital marketer CRM and automation drip flow specialist I'm also the best-selling author of drip campaign secrets I created Engage More Pro all-in-one real estate marketing platform to help real estate pros all over the world to easily and efficiently capture, nurture, and convert more leads into sales and increase ROI. Powered by High Level, Engage More Pro is loaded to the brim with a ton of my real estate niche-specific content, training, and coaching for agents, title, and mortgage professionals who are looking to up their game and consolidate all essential marketing tools into one affordable software. Seriously, there is no other real estate marketing platform on the market that includes literally everything you have wanted to grow your business and your sales. The money is in lead generation and lead conversion, and that is exactly what Engage More Pro was built to do. And if you already have an agency account with high level or want to sign up direct and focus on the real estate niche, then I have you covered with snapshots to help you grow your business. Sign up as an affiliate below and I will hook you up with the content and bonuses you need to help you grow your business as you help real estate professionals become successful. Stop doing the same thing over and over with the same sad results. Visit EngageMorePro.com to learn more. All right, I'm on Leah's site and I'm just checking to see if she had Lake Washington on here and I actually don't see that. Um, in the perfect world, my recommendation is actually, if you know you're gonna be doing an ad, you really should be um, creating an ad that, uh, that a landing page or a page on your site that is specific to your offer because that's good for search engine optimization. So I highly recommend you do that. In this case, I'm just going to go here right now. I don't know anything about Lake Washington, but um, I'm just going to go here and do a big and advanced search and see what I can find. And this particular thing is going to be based on us with views. So we always try to send people to our website because, for, first of all, we never want to assume <laughs> that every lead we're going to get is going to close. So everybody that you send people to look at this listings over and over again is going to be a good idea. So really what you want to do is, is keep sending people back to look at the new listings because even though whatever they're getting today from you, they may not be ready to buy. So you want to make sure that you have, um, you keep sending them listings to it. So I'm going to just put in Lake Washington. I don't have the slightest clue if I'm going to find anything, but okay, there is a Lake Washington school district. Lake Washington Ridge area. I have no idea if that's related. Um, so right now I'm just going to pick the school district. And um, the other thing is that I know she was talking about views of the lake. 
So she might already somewhere have a page built for this, but I'm going to go ahead and property views lake. Okay, look at that. How nice. All right, so this pulled in everything in Lake Washington, and now I'm going to try to find the home. And let's see what we can find. So she does have a list showing up. Whoopee! Okay, great. Um, the other thing I highly recommend at this point, so we have a, we basically have a page. It's slowly loading. Um, I would also make sure that when you uh, have these sorting highest to lowest, this is really not, you don't really want it to sort that way. You want not the most expensive home showing up every time because this is the same link that you will send over and over again to people as time goes by inside the CRM, and I'll show you how to do that. So ideally, really what you want to do is change the way this search result shows up. So if we can go here, so show advanced filters, maybe I do it here. Okay, show, okay, here we are. This is what I want, newest listings. That's what I want. Let's go back. Okay, and then I'm going to find my home. All right, now, by just doing that, it gave me a new URL, and it's all based on the search result, how it's showing up. So you'll notice now it changed for the newest listings popping to the top. That's what you want, okay? I am, You can't see this, but at the top of the screen, I'm going into... Uh, make it copy the URL for this and I'm going to go back over now to the workflow inside of her account and we're going to add this because we needed to live we need to deliver this right so I'm going into her CRM I'm going to her marketing where the workflows are all right let me go back okay I had to go and make sure that she had all the templates in here right so um if you go to uh, the marketing templates or the marketing go to emails go to templates and when you click on that then over here I'm actually going to search for guide because um, I know that the first email that's coming out of there is like a uh, here's the guide so I can actually use that template so I'm going to clone that so let's see we've got a mm, buyer guide offer let's just use that one um, and I'm going to clone this one. And I'm going to call this the um, Buyer Washington uh, Washington Lake View Washington Lake View, and then uh, New Lead. Okay, so I'm just renaming that one template. I'm going to hit Clone, and then there I'm going to edit this. And I'm just going to make sure I'm putting the link to that property in the email. So thanks so much for requesting the, and I'm not going to edit this out of here. I don't need this because this, uh, the list of Washington Lake View Homes, right? I want to be sure you received it. So just in case, here it is again. Click, click the, I'm just going to say click the blue button below button below for instant access uh, and then it, the fields are fine as you can pull in their name quick reply can you let me know how else can I help you with your home search at this time I have some great home deals you may want to know about whatever she can come in and edit this later so right here I'm going to change what this says that says guide so I'm going to say uh, view all view all Lake Washington with view homes and actually, I don't want to use the word view twice. Uh, I'm just going to put A, all. That's it. Now, when I click on that, I've got to put the URL in. So right now, it's pulling from the custom field, so I don't need that. I'm just going to paste in the big, long URL that was to her website, right? Let's just make sure that that is still correct. It was a really long URL, I noticed. Let's go through, make sure it's the right one. Yeah, it's, something doesn't look right. It's looking sketchy. Uh, let me get that off there and make sure I've got this off of her site. It's a big, long URL. Okay. All right. I'm just going to copy it again. I think it's fine. Uh, I just want to make sure. And then I'm just going to paste it in. So link action is going to URL. It's going to go boom. All right. So that's good. And if I want to view this, I can. But I also want, actually, let me slide this up. You can't see because I renamed that. And um, I didn't see that because this thing was not up there. Uh, I'm going to go here and preview the email. But before I do that, I want to change the subject line on this. 
uh, your home buyer guys at close. I'm going to say here instead your Lake, your Lake Washington home list is enclosed. That's what it says. Now you can put from name and now you could have, this can also be preset in the workflow. So I'm actually going to leave all this. It's just going to pull automatically from what's in her account. So right now I'm fine with that. Um, this button here will create an email back to you to, to um, Leah. So we're all set there. Now if I want to see what this looks like, I can look at the preview template. You can also send yourself a test I recommend that you never use the test thing. I always just add myself in as a lead. Make sure that you have a different email address that you're sending yourself to because you don't want to send an email from the same email to the same email. So that the whole email thing is a whole nother discussion. But all right, so I, you know, am I happy with this? I'm not in love with the way this button looks because it's kind of wide here. And just so you know, you can actually edit this more if you wanted to. You could. Um, go here and change the appearance of this to make it a little bit wider. Uh, I'm going to go to the template. I'm going to go out to 800 on this template. So the buttons, it extends out a little bit. It didn't take it. 800, 800. Okay. Hello. Let's try it again. Eight, 800. So I get for trying to be fast. So that's a little bit bigger. It looks a little better. You could also change the size of the print on this if you wanted to, but it looks fine to me. So I'm going to hit save template do a whole training on creating templates. All right, cool. Now, this is also a clickable link. So if we want to track this, uh, we could also create a trigger link for this. That link, well, let's go ahead and do it just for since I'm here. I want to create a trigger link for that email. And um, looks like she's got a few already set up in here. So uh, let's add a link on this one. I'm going to call this Lake Washington Properties. She's been pretty good. She's been busy in here doing stuff. So let's go ahead and put that in here to save. So it is going to track that, which is going to help a lot when she's trying to determine who's interested in what she's sending. So um, there's a whole other workflow you can build based on people clicking on certain links. And so that's good to know. But this will also, uh, you know, this link here, you can track all the activity going on it. So it's kind of fun. Anyway, add it. It's never going to hurt just not. All right, now what I want to do is go and replace the template that's in the workflow because right now it's not replaced. We just edited it. So I'm going to go back out and um, we're going to go back out to the workflow, which I actually need to, to start over because I realized she was missing something in the previous thing. So um, we're going to, I'm going to duplicate that workflow again and we want it to be the buyer nurture for uh, Washington Lake View Homes. Okay, hit the create. And so I should have a clone on that. And where'd it go? Okay, when I run a search for it here, there it is there. And now I just need to go in and, and, and fine tune this um, campaign. All right, so this is specific for this. So we want this to trigger anytime somebody signs up for something. So um, I'm gonna add the trigger in a minute. Uh, well, actually, I'll just go ahead and do it now. So we know that um, anytime somebody, so here, here's where it gets kind of funny because um, there are gonna be very, because of listing the leads the way it's set up, um, we just want to make sure that when, because I added the source to that particular landing page, she's going to need to create a number of different zaps. So what I'm going to suggest she does is clone that zap for every landing page she has. This particular one is for the Lake Washington. So the trigger is going to be the source, right? So we want to, anytime the source changes, so the contact changed, it's going to be the source. So I'm going to come here and look for the source. Uh, it's a drop down. Let's see if she's even got it in here added. And um, let's see if it's the source that was coming in and it's going into the sources. All right, so I had to go back and check. So um, it doesn't look like she's added Lake Washington View Home yet as her sources. 
So I'm going to go back out and actually add Lake Washington View Home to her drop down. I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to go down to her custom um, fields and move myself over here. I'm going to run a search for source. So the source drop down is right here. Um, hopefully it will be added to this. So this is where we want to edit it. So I'm going to click on this and click edit. And I need to add Lake Washington View Home to this. So let's do that. I'm going to add an option. Lake, and it needs to be the same. Okay, and hit save. All right. And I just want to make sure that that's the way it's called, Lake Washington View Home. Okay, I'm, I'm in Zapier right now, just making sure. Okay, cool. Now that I've added it, that can trigger the workflow now. You just got to make sure that you've got it added so that it's part of the um, triggering of this campaign. So let's go back out to our Washington Flow again. Washington Flow. I'm going to come back to that recurring flow in a minute. And now I'm going to trigger this based on that source. So anytime that source comes in, it's going to trigger this campaign. So again, I go back to make sure that you've got different flows for each one of your landing pages created. So everything I'm doing, once you get it set up, you won't have to do it again, right? It's just done. You can actually take this and clone this one for all your buyer campaigns if you wanted to once this is done. So, and then you're just going to change the trigger out. So now we're going to go contact changed and that contact is going to be the source source drop down and that drop down has been added to say Lake Washington view homes right boom save that trigger so then anytime a new lead comes in uh, and I'm gonna actually make a note on this I like to do this so I know what's going on with it whoops not here um, source um, Lake Washington uh, uh, source uh, L2L um, Lake Washington View Homes. Okay, actually I would have done that when I had this open the first time, but I always forget this step. <laughs> then I go back and go, the reason is, is I, I want to come out here and see exactly what's going on. I don't want to have to go digging around later. Now the other thing I'm going to do is assign this lead to her right away because I know that my workflows and all my templates pull in her name and spots and we use the user field. So I want to make sure that she's marked as the user right off the bat. Um, this is just good practice. And click on that and save. Okay. Um, it's already tagged with the buyer campaign. Uh, the contact types being added automatically. I don't have to worry about that. The status is brand new. That's fine. And then the email. Here's the email. It's going to go out and I need to change the template. So the one that I created was the one for the Washington. So I need to go find that template. This one's set up already for something else. So I'm going to type in Washington. There's the, lead, the letter. I'm replacing that letter. I'm going to, I'm fine with everything else in here. And um, let's just see. Send action. Uh, I'm going to change this. Um, Lake Washington new registrant L L two L Lake Washington. Okay, send ASAP. It's save. Okay, I think that's fine. We should be okay with it. I'm missing something. It's too long. It doesn't like it. Okay, email. Send ASAP. I don't even really care about sending ASAP. I know that it's sending ASAP, but it's, it's save. That's gonna do it. Oh, I have to. You now have to put in. The email that you're sending from in here now. So um, let's go to the user and put their email here. User email, user phone name, hit save action. That's kind of new. That wasn't always like that. All right, the, the email is going to go and then a text is going to go. I need to change this text, which I knew I could do here. So I didn't go create a new text for this because I know that I can change this out here. Um, I'm actually going to put none. Whoops, actually. Um, yeah, uh, actually, let me go back out and see what I got. Buyer guide offer, I might snip it. Uh, I could change this, probably. I don't want to edit it. So actually, and I'm just going to make it, I'm going to change this out myself. Um, uh, 
I don't want none. I should go none. Then I go hi. I'm gonna put their name in here. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do to save myself a minute? Because <laughs> I'm lazy. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the guide again. Buyer guide offer. Okay. Um, I'm actually just gonna copy this. And then I'm gonna take this off and start over. And then I can paste it in blank. All right, cool. Hi, their name. This is, and I just put Leah uh, with, and then her brokerage is automatically going to pull in. Thanks for registering for my, um, for the, thanks for requesting the um, Lake Washington Homes with Views list. Be sure to check your email, it's on your way. Now, I normally will not add a link to a text because I don't want them clicking and not responding to me. So I'm going to ask a question, right? Um, this, unfortunately, has to be in here. This reply stops, so I'm going to leave that. And um, let's go ahead and hit Save. Now, after this, I really don't need to worry about anything else because everything else is going to do what it says. This just says, oh, by the way, here's a link to my site. Uh, this can now be used... For everything else in the system right so again I sell my drip campaigns so if, you know if you guys are interested for these workflows make sure and check the links here if you need these but um, that's what this is for so if you are watching this on YouTube uh, definitely tap into it all right cool now every time this source is coming in from now on it's automatically going to turn on this campaign so um, I'm actually, the, the next step is going to be to publish this, but there's a couple other things. I'm going to go to settings. Um, if you think for some reason someone might come back twice for this, I would not leave this on. I would shut it off. Um, nowadays, this is going to be turned on automatically. So I would probably not turn this on. I would click that off so someone doesn't come back twice because they're going to get these campaigns over and over again, and we just don't really want that to happen. Uh, they're going to get all that. You can also preset... Uh, certain time frames when things go out. For emails, it doesn't bother me. If somebody schedules, you know, re request something in the middle of the night, um, then, you know, you could, if you wanted to, set up the time frame so that it's restricted um, and, you know, that you, know, you could do that. If you don't turn this on, it's just going to run based, I think it's a 24-hour period. So whatever time it goes out, the next email that goes out is going to go out based on that 24-hour period or text. So if you want to edit it so the text doesn't go out when it needs, like in the middle of the night, you can always do that. Um, I personally don't care, frankly, because they, they sign out in the middle of the night as they get. On the other hand, you could set uh, a time frame so that a text doesn't go out in the middle of the night after this one. I want to send this one right here. This is like the first one, the new registrant. They're getting the new text. And they're getting everything that they ask for right away. If they sign up at 3 in the morning, they should know they're going to get a text. But you could wait until the morning if you want to put a time on it. So you could, that delay can be based on, you could edit this delay so that it's actually going to go at a certain window of time. You see right here the advanced window where it's only going to send from this to this. Just keep in mind, if it comes, if somebody signs up at 5.01 p.m. and you've got this on, um, and then they're not going to get anything till tomorrow at 9 a.m. So just something to think about, okay? Um, I don't care because they signed up that way. I'm actually going to shut that advanced thing off because I don't want I don't want the advanced thing taking over. So I'm going to oops, let me shut that off. Oops, I'm in the wrong one. All right. So just some other things to know. Once somebody gets into this campaign, you can always see everybody who's on it by just clicking the enrollment history to view that. Um, and the execution logs are just uh, more, you know, reporting that you can you can have regarding this. So when it's ready to rock and roll, um, and I'm not going to turn it on for her right now because I want her to check it first before, but and make sure that the link is what she wants. So right now I'm not going to. But in order for it to start running, you have to make sure it's published. That's it. Once it's published, any new leads coming in off that landing page, it will automatically start communicating. All right, so for all of our future listing the leads one, leads changes, let me just hit save, make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, I would take this campaign and clone it if they're buyers. If they're sellers, you got to go set up a seller campaign and do what I did for the seller side of this, okay? All right, next, um, I do a recurring campaign as well. So I'll turn both of these on 
for this. So I'm going to set one up for uh, the recurring um, listings that I want them to keep getting going back over to that site. So I have a I have a page that I've got set up that I have called the recurring Washington Lake with views homes. And what it is, it's one email. It waits however long you want it to wait. In this case, um, we've got it at seven days. I think if a buyer's coming in, I'm going to send it every three days. And uh, I'm going to say wait three days. But she could send it more than that or less than that. This letter, and then it's going to repeat. So every three days, it's just going to go, all right? And this will trigger on for that Washington, but I've got to do the same trigger for that source in order for it to turn on. Another way I could do this is to add this as a step on the other campaign. Um, so, you know, you decide, but you still, this campaign is specific to that um, that particular, you know, listing. So let's, let's go ahead and um, make sure that it's triggered to go on. And the trigger is going to be contact changed, and we're going to add that filter to the source. Again, we're going to do the exact same thing. So I'm basically turning two campaigns. One's going to be running here, one's running over here. That's the way I've got it set up now. And then added, and we're going to go down to this so it turns on at the same time. So now it's triggering based on Washington Lake. I keep, yeah, I forgot to put it on here again. Uh, Washington, that's the L2. I want to put L2L for listing the leads. L2L, Washington Lake Home list okay or uh, sign up home whatever save trigger all right now this is the email now that we have to edit now this email if i have to really should make a clone of this one as well i'm going to show you what happens if i do it in here um, actually we got to find it so i'm going to go to recurring i'm looking for the recurring buyer weekly deal letter which is it um, now, if I click on edit, now this is the problem. If you edit in here and you save it as a template, um, it's going to save it uh, over the old one. So we don't, I mean, I'm going to, I could use this and I probably just will for right now. Below is a link to today's new listings, uh, or let's see, new listings. Uh, Washington, Washington Lake, gosh, Lake View Homes. Okay. Um, if these listings don't match or live, blah, 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 contact me to schedule a showing. So the thing about it is, is I've got to make sure this is buyer recurring weekly deals, uh, Washington, and I'm not even recurring. I'm going to call it Washington Lake. So you want to make sure that if you're going to re, if you're going to change it here, it's being changed everywhere else in the system. So if this is used anywhere else, which it shouldn't be, you should clone them now. But I did want to show you how this works. Washington Lake View Lake or Washington Lake View Homes. <laughs> okay. So that link for the website, I'm going back over. I'm going to grab it again. And again, she may want to change this because it might not be what she wants, but I. No. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go down here to this. I'm going to change this and say today's Washington Lake Combs. Washington Lake View Homes. And then I'm going to change that URL like I did in the old one. And now this will be going out every um, three days the way I have it set up. Uh, and I might want to widen this out again too because I'm sure it's going to look the same that the other one did. 800 just so that that button is nicer you can change anything else about this you want okay um, the other thing I would do is um, go back out to the let's see I'm gonna change the subject line on it and let's see but I'm going to save this as a new template, um, and we're going to call this the weekly deals, and I'm going to call it the, um, uh, and it's not weekly deals, Washington uh, View Homes. Okay. Okay. All right. Now it's sending all that. It's pulling everything in. So now this should just automatically run now from now on. So when she's ready, we're going to publish it. I'm not ready yet. 
So we'll just make sure that she's ready. Oh, the subject lines happen here. Okay. Today's new Washington view homes. Ugh. List. Okay. Save that action. Let's see if it changes. I just want to make sure. I'm going to go back and check it to make sure because it's still that template and it worries me. Yeah, it did. Okay. So, all right. So this is where you change the subject line. So in the other one, when you're creating the edit, the template, you do it inside the template itself. So, okay. All right. Hit the save. All right, now, just because I did this in this workflow, I don't have anything else I have to do in here other than publish it. So I'm not going to do it yet until she's ready um, and make sure that she's happy with the link and everything. But this thing is now finally ready to go. I know this was kind of a long training, but there's a lot of information to know here. And uh, I think it's really important that you use the system because we built it. If you had to recreate this email yourself or this workflow yourself, it would have sucked. Nobody likes to do that. So everything else is going to run. There's 12 months um, of campaign uh, templates going out, plus the recurring campaigns running. So you've got two things going on. So once she hits publish, then uh, when anytime any uses that landing page. So just make sure you know is that for all the rest of your landing pages you have, you want to make sure and come in and create um, a workflow for each one of those and then make sure you've got a zap set up for each one of those. So it's a little bit of work involved, but once it's up and running, you don't have to touch it again. So she's got however many in here that she's using. These all need to get hooked up so that uh, they're all running smoothly over in her account. All right. Hopefully that does it. That's a long one, but it's a good one. All right. Thanks. We'll talk to you later. Let me know if you need some drip campaigns. All right.